was really skeptical about all this stuff. But you know what's happened? Is his report card before we brought him in was D's and he got straight A's this time and it's only been three months. I can't believe it. And all of his teachers are saying the, the, the biggest change in attitude they've ever seen, right? I mean, that would be the best one. Totally, you know, to, 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 now, can you orchestrate that regularly? It's tough. It and, yeah, it but it's tough, right? But the next best to that is what he's saying, which is you're not showing them a video, but people are getting up well, seemingly randomly, you know, it's, 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 it's like a revival, you know, and people are getting up randomly saying, oh, this is the best thing ever because, and this, this is what we had because, and you certainly want to orchestrate that at, at like belt graduations because it's all those white belts there that need to be renewed and you want to be hearing from the more advanced people. It's why, it's why you know, you do a little demo of the, like the brown and black belt kids and they're doing all this stuff, but that's fun. But it's even, more, it's even more important to have the parent of this kid talk about how he had two left feet and how he was in braces and how, right? Because what will happen is a parent of a white belt sees that uh, brown belt and they make the assumption of my kid couldn't be like that because he's uncoordinated. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but, but then at the next level is when it's now media, when you're, when you're kind of staging it to give it to them, is what, the, the, in the hierarchy of what's believable, a, a completely what looks like off the cuff, natural and sincere on video is much better than just hearing it on audio, which is much better than seeing it in writing. And when you see it in writing, you see an awful lot of, of advertisers muck this up because they'll do like a powerful written testimonial and then they'll have it signed MJ. Well, everybody assumes that that's made up, right? Uh, I'd rather have, if it's in writing, a powerful testimonial and it's uh, 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 Jane Smith, parent of Joey Smith, age seven, student at Leewood Elementary School. Jane Smith, RN, uh, director of nursing at uh, St. Mary's uh, uh, Hospital, right? The more detail I can have ethically, the better, right? Because then it, and, 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 and next, I'd rather have it be the powerful testimonial, Mary Smith, RN, St. Mary's, uh, uh, a parent of Joey Smith, student at Leewood Elementary School, and a picture of mom and the son together next to it, right? But, but the more you get that kind of detail, the more it goes from this isn't real to this is real, right? And in our case, like those, what martial arts has done for me, essays. I mean, it's, they're all in different fonts. We don't, we don't go try to typeset it. Um, uh, we now require them to put a little picture of themselves on it. Uh, uh, their name is signed to it. But the grammar isn't corrected, right? I mean, it's just what they put together with their picture on it. And then we just make copies of them all and, and pass them out. Yeah. That's right. There you go. Yeah. Use them all. Use them all. Right? So, uh, and like our application for that is, you know, every week for a couple months, a different package of the essays from a different, a different testing cycle. Right? So here's 30 of them. Here's another 30 of them. Here's 40 of them. Here's 20 of them. And uh, again, you know, some people say, well, you're killing a lot of trees for, you know, for that. They're not reading them all. Well, I mean, you know, at, at least they're being impressed by bulk, right? And if, yeah, if you, if, you, if you read a couple of them, you got, the, you got the gist of the thing. But it's, again, I hardly ever see enough of this, right? And it should be all over the website for the intro. It should be, you know, it should be the primary thing that they're getting on the way into and out of the intro if you're doing a two intro process. It should be the thing that all during the white belt process they're getting inundated with. Um, and it is one of the things, 
uh, thinking back to like EFC, I mean, EFC is the thing they were really good at, is you could go through their newsletter, you could go through their thing, and all it was is, is seven articles talking about how great EFC was. I mean, that's really all it was, right? It wasn't any content. It was all, they're the greatest thing that ever happened to me because, is that right, Carol? I mean, uh, and it, it's one of the things they orchestrated extremely well, right? So, so the, the, the more of that you can do, the better. And I, I, don't, I don't think there's any such thing as too much. Um, and a, a, a great example is look at, um, uh, look at Bill Phillips and, and uh, EAS and his book Body for Life and all that stuff. I mean, there's, you know, before and after and all that stuff everywhere you look. Yeah. Well, and, and you do see a lot of people screw it up, right? So you see, you see, you see an awful lot where, you know, you 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 you've got an actor that you know is an actor, right? Um, and the uh, the the one other thing to add about collecting this from from students, the big mistake you can make is you take your A-rated students and say, uh, hey. Today's Tuesday. On Thursday, we're going to be uh, bringing a video camera in and getting a lot of feedback on the program. And I was wondering if you could uh, 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 give us a really nice testimonial about how much this has done for Joey. See, you don't prep them. Because what happens with the ones who are most eager to please is they go sit at home and like write out what they're going to say. And, and then they try to say what they wrote out. And, I, yeah, I mean, they're not De Niro, right? So now it, it, it comes off as staged, right? You want it, you want it to be... It's a funny thing, human nature is, let's go this way, because that will help us be prepared, but yeah. Yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah, it comes off as staged. So you uh, don't tell them two days. Don't tell them ahead. Never tell them ahead. Um, the, um, um, I mean, if you're trying to get people to put it in writing, and there are some contexts where I'd like to actually get them to put it in writing, and it's, it's, a very, it's frankly a very difficult thing to do. But if I'm working with elementary schools, I'd really like to get the principal of the school to put together a, a, a couple of paragraphs of how great we are, put it on their letterhead, and fax it around, and scan it so I can, I can use it, that type of thing. Um, you know, then it's different. But from a student perspective, you know, I always hear that you tell me you get lots of testimonials and I've asked a lot of people to write up something, but I just can't get them to write up something. It's because it's difficult, right? Um, I mean, you guys have seen, and let's see. Uh, little tiny spots, part of our curriculum as they progress, tiny or you know, smaller, bigger, bigger, something like that. Part of, the, part of their exam, part of what's necessary for your requirements for their exam. Yeah. Twitter and writing? Yes. No, absolutely. And I mean, we've always... We, we, we've, we've always done it as, as a, a threshold at Black Belt, but you know, there's certainly no reason not to do it at the end of every year or something like that. You bet, you bet. There's no reason not to, you know, especially if, yeah. Yeah, uh, the, the, the reason to do it is what he said a minute ago, is to keep, Getting them to sit down and remember what they've accomplished, and 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 to remind them that it's in part at least attributable to what we've done with them. Yeah. Yeah. We did it for the other reason. We did it because I wanted to remind them. Of, of, of what they had accomplished. And then it dawned on me one time that we had like a thousand of them sitting in the drawer over here we hadn't done anything with. It's like, yeah. I do that at every belt level. Like yeah. Yellow belt, write up a letter to your friend saying why you know, 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 Leadership. Right. That's really all about what they've learned. And then at Black Belt, they give a speech, What has my journey been? And they give it to everybody. And so at each level, and, and what I found out was I love that. It wasn't yeah. just yeah. that 
this was useful stuff for us to use. It was that it really made them think at every level, and really what I've gotten out of this. And then yeah. it has evolved and gotten greater with, with time. No, that's great. That's great. Yeah, I mean, that, 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 between the two of you, that, that's a keeper. That's a keeper. Absolutely. Um, and again, I mean, we have some self-interest in the content because we can repurpose it for, you know, sharing with other people. But really what you're doing it for is for them, right? And, and, and sometimes, I mean, just in the developmental process, you'll, you'll see people who hit plateaus or they go like this and they start to do this, and it's because they lose sight of the objectives, right? Um, the, um, um, we were at Mall of America one time, uh, having gone to um, uh, the Diamond Nationals. And has anybody been to Mall of America? Yes. I have no idea why I would ever go to Mall of America other than it's just a big ass mall, right? But we went into the, um, uh, the Disney store, I think it was. There was some store there. And there was this huge, um, 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 cartoon, you, you know what I mean, when they do cartoons, they do the hand, uh, the hand cells, and you can then buy the cells, uh, you know, a, a lot of times in our stores, or, or Disney will sell them, but there was this huge Roadrunner cartoon with a quote that said, uh, a fanatic is one uh, who redoubles his effort when he has lost sight of his mission, and so uh, it was like, 3500 bucks, 2500 bucks, or something like that. But, you know, so I was like, I got to have that and bought that and had a shit bag. And so I've got, you know, I've always had it in my, my office. But, uh, you know, in, in our context, I mean, it's so important to keep reminding them of what the mission is and keep reminding them of what they've accomplished and keep, re and, you know, in a self interested way to remind them that we at least, you know, had, had some part in it. Um, and again, sometimes we have like second, third degree black belts that flame out. And they go, th they go from, you know, totally loyal and dedicated and happy because of all the things we help them do, and then they forget about how they got there. I've had meetings the last three weeks with exactly that. Yeah. Exactly because they're like ready to drop out. Yeah. 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 Well, but there's two dynamics that happen. One is. You, you let them get bored. So you've got to keep doing new stuff to keep them engaged. But number two is a lot of times they go from it's you help them get there to they did it all on their own and, and they, they get to that egocentric stage. But the type of thing that Carol is doing keeps that in check. It doesn't prevent it 100%, but it keeps it in check. Right? Um, and I mean, and for them to be successful, they need it to be kept in check. Uh, here's two options. Uh, since we're not going to go quite as long because some of you have flights today, we could take a short lunch break. Uh, we could pretty much power through lunch with maybe 10 to 15 minutes to grab a, a quick snack and end a little early. Who's flying out tonight? Uh, what time's your flight? 4.30. Okay. Okay, so for your purposes, we'd be better off to power through and maybe be done uh, you're going to have to be out of here by, say, 3.30, probably. So uh, power through to maybe 3.30 or 4 or something like that. Um, I, it, it seems to me it's better to do that than take, like, a, you know, hour 15 or something. Uh, would everybody agree? So um, um, uh, shall we maybe, maybe now take a, a, a 10 or 15? Which one? Record. What's that? Solid. Cool. It's working. There you go. Okay. Um, but, but, but again, I mean, in, in that conversation, the, the um, unequivocally, a bigger down payment will escalate your growth and make the contracts more solid. Okay, so 167 down, 167 dollars a month is a lot less solid than uh, 467 down, 167 a month, right? Uh, same thing is true for renewal. I'd rather have a thousand dollars down, 350 a month, than 350 down, 350 a month, right? So there's, there's, uh, you know, 
uh, unequivocal empirical evidence that a bigger down payment makes a more solid contract. Uh, on the flip side, there's some evidence that putting up any barrier to the sale makes the sale either more difficult or diminishes the ratios, right? So what you'll end up with is, and as a single school operator, it's, it's a different conversation if you're doing the sales yourself than as a multiple school operator who's trying to get, in Master Clark's case, 30 people or 28 people or whatever to, to, to do them themselves. And the more, you, the, the more you're in the multi-school mode, the more you're trying to make it brain dead, simple, anybody can do it, and it could be on the ATM machine at the front door if, if humanly possible, right? Um, but we, we, know, we know for a fact that not only does this accelerate your cash flow, but it makes the contract more solid, so it, it, it decreases the likelihood of a cancellation, right? Um, and then number two is from a, a, a standpoint of a full cash deal is it's going to accelerate your cash flow in inverse proportion to your dropout ratio, right? So if I drop out 1% a month, doesn't make much difference, to tell you the truth. If I drop out 5% a month, it makes a lot of difference. If I drop out 7 8% a month, it makes a huge difference, right? And in fact, you heard some in the past of the proponents of cashing everybody out were also the same people who were saying, well, everybody drops out, so get as much money as you can early on. And, and I, I cringe to the point of, of worrying about that being an unethical conversation because I don't want any of my staff cashed for life paying payments for life, up for renewal next, to treat anybody differently, I want them to treat them all at a, an A plus, right? Now, we may be a little attentive for a couple weeks as we're trying to get the, the renewal done or when they're prepping for black butt or something like that, but I want them to, to all be giving high quality service. And then the next thing is accelerated payments. And Let's take, Greg, what you've been doing, and you've been doing it for a couple different reasons, but um, you know, what, what, uh, what Greg is doing, what's, what's the, the, the number on a six-month payment on a 12-month enrollment? Uh, it's, uh, six months is uh, 397. Okay, so he's doing 397 for six months on a 12-month enrollment, right? And a comparable that I did for years, we still have some of our owner operators doing it this way, is we were doing leadership was a second degree enrollment and they had paid a first. In other words, there's a payment of let's say uh, 347 a month for uh, 48 months and then there's another 30 months here tagged at the end that was already prepaid, right? Uh, and now, the thing that I like about his version here is what are you going to be trying to do? Let's say this is month six, this is month 12. Yeah, yeah, right here at month, uh, month two or month three is what you want to do is move them into 397 a month for leadership. Already used to paying 397 a month. Okay. Um, so, so now I move them into 397 a month for leadership. The payment doesn't change, nothing changes, right? Now the logic here was you have, pay for six months, you get six months free, but really all that matters in their mind is what am I paying per month, right? And if he's pay, charging 397 for six months right now, what percentage of them are doing that? Uh, we've got about, let's say 35%. Okay, so that's, if it, if it was 70, 80 percent doing that. But, you know, we then, also just right. That, we were doing three equal payments is how I started it. Yeah, that's all no good. <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Right. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. How, how do you uh, but, uh, present that to them in 397? Uh, so, so give them still three options. I've like given them month to month is 189. 397, you can double it up. Well, 189 plus the down payment. So that 397 essentially has the mm -hmm. chunk Right. Pay. Right. And um, so they get a 10% discount. is what that calculates out to. If they, if they pay it off in six months. So they look at it and go, well, this is going to save me $200. Mm -hmm. I'll just go ahead and double it up. Well, it's, well, without getting bogged down into that detail for a second, uh, uh, I don't know if any of you guys know Miko Pellet, but uh, Miko uh, was an early uh, uh, coaching client of mine, really nice guy. He uh, uh, sold the school. He, the, the person he sold the school to was in uh, San Diego, Toby, uh, remember? But um, he was doing a lot of things right, but one of the early things I was trying to get him to do, and he's on Coronado Island, uh, is I was trying to get him to raise his prices. And we started, I was trying to get him to raise his prices. It's a common refrain, right? Uh, but he was doing something like what Greg's talking about here, which was he was doing a, I'm going to make this up, but I'm going to, I'm going to say he was doing a 36-month black belt program and he was charging them 297 for a year, and then they're paid in full for black belt. Okay, something like that. Um, and I don't know if the numbers are right, but I mean, you, you get the idea, right? So he's got a, a 36 month program, and he's all, all of them, I mean, that's, that's just his presentation, unless you know, he worked a special deal, are paying for 12 months, and let's again say it's 250 or 297 or something like that. And they had 24 months at the, at the tag in that was free. And so we started talking about that. I said, well, and he was resisting me and the staff was resisting me and our guys can't do it and stuff. And I said, well, your guys, how, how many of your guys can do the 297 you're charging? Well, we don't have any problem with that. Okay. Well, Miko, just make it 297 for 36 months. Triple my prices? No. Just stop talking about the two years free thing. Just two ninety seven a month. If they can pay two ninety seven a month, they can pay two ninety seven a month. Just do thirty six months. It took me a, a while to talk him into doing it, and then he did it. Month later, two months later, he comes back and says, "Oh, that's, uh, I, I, I said, I said, what's going on?" He goes, oh, everybody's saying it's, uh, it's uh, uh, too expensive, da, da, da. He's got this whole, you know, like, he's freaking out about it. I say, okay, Miko, let's, uh, let's evaluate the numbers for a second. Uh, in the month that you're, you've done this, that everybody's objection is it's too, too much, how many people did you present the renewal to? 30. How many of them did it? 20. But the other 10 said it was too much. OK. Go back four months. How many did you present it to? 30. How many did you do? 17. Well, what was their excuse then? Well, what do you mean? Well, they all have some excuse for why they did it. Is, did the excuse change, or what is it your, your problem is? What do you mean? Your ratio is better now. Did the ones that do it complain that it was too expensive? Few of them. But they did it? Yeah. Okay. The ones that didn't do it, they complained it was too expensive? Yeah. But they didn't do it? Yeah. And so before you're telling me that it was 40% uh, didn't do it, and now it's 32% that don't do it, and there's a problem? And you get two more years out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, but what's the next iteration? I mean, that this was like I was banging my head on the wall, right? But, but the next iteration is, well, if they're paying 297 for 36 months, what can I do next? Well, I can offer 597 for 18 
verses 297 for 36, right? So I can, I can have this be option A and this be option B, and this is a little bit of a discount. And some of them are going to do that. But the easiest damn thing in the world is, is this first one. Uh, when, when I opened in Denver, you know, I tell the story of doing 1,500 enrollments or something like that in, in 12, 18 months. But the offer was this. The offer was... Uh, uh, for a long time, three months free. So that was part of the offer, right? And then what it was is you enroll for 12 months and we give you 15 months. And then what it was is I was renewing you at month three to Black Belt Club anyway and none of this ever became an issue, right? So, so I was, all of our ads were three months free, and, and I think it probably also had the introductory offer, you know, three months free, asterisk with enrollment, um, and, um, uh, you know, 1995, or I forget, but you know, uh, some other, in, in addition, introductory offer. And so they come into lesson one, and we'd say, uh, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna uh, you get, Three months free. It's you know with any enrollment. How does that work? Uh, well, we just add it to the end of the program. Oh, I don't get to go for free for you know for the next three months. Well, no, you get three months tagged to the end. So we do the do the enrollment, tag it to the end of the enrollment. But it didn't make any difference, right? The other thing, for Greg's perspective, though, is Greg. Keep in mind, it was it was it was always something like this. Open in August. It was 100 new students here, and then it was 75 renewals here. And it was a big stack of cash here. So Lakewood paid for Arvada, paid for Aurora, paid for Inglewood, paid, you know, it was, it was just roll and roll and roll and roll and roll, because it was zero capitalization to speak of. So, I mean, it was, it was always month three and four was huge. I mean, and, but, but it was about, about that ratio, about 75% of them. With the logic of you enrolled in the grand opening special, we've already raised the prices, but we'll go ahead and honor this for the next, you know, for the, for the next four weeks, but we have to go ahead and finalize the enrollment. And there's, there's no time that you can do, I mean, in your situation, how many, how many do you have that aren't renewed? A hundred. Here's the number. That's an easy number to work with, but 75 renewals, right? And worst case, you should be able to do, um, um, uh, let's say, 20 paid in full. I'm going to say at an average of 10,000 apiece, so that's 200, right? And then you should be able to do uh, 65 with at least a $100 a month bump in the payment. So there's a $6,500 a month bump, and the 65 you should be able to do at least uh, 500 down. So now you've got another, what, 30, uh, 55. So you've got 255,000 cash, and you've got a permanent bump of, not permanent, but you know, you've got a bump in billing at least $6,500. Um, that should be simple to do. Okay. Not easy. Not easy. Well, well you know, I, I mean, understand the difference. I mean, the, you know, the, uh, the process is simple, but you do have 75 people that on average you're going to have to interact with maybe three times, right, to get it done. So you've got at least um, um, 200 conversations that have to happen, and you've got to have the whole renewal bliss thing going on in the school. Um, but you know, this, 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 this would sure ease the, the, the suffering of the grand opening a lot, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, and that's, I mean, completely doable, right? So, you know, and um, in inflation-adjusted terms, that's the numbers I was doing 30 years ago, right? I mean, you know, coming out of the Junior Institute, I knew the system. I'd never seen, like, the whole renewal bliss thing done, but... Uh, you know, I, I was like, I'm jumping off, you know, jumping off the cliff without the net, 
and I don't have any cash and I better generate some soon. And so how can I do that best? And you know. Six weeks, yeah, yeah. If you go much more than six weeks, you lose momentum, right? So, if it was uh, if it was now to the end of March, okay, that gives you enough runtime. Uh, I mean, you have to have a real drop dead date, and you have to stick to your guns on the deadline, and you have to really push the last week or two to not let them go over the the expiration date. But six or seven weeks. Um, Anything much more than that, you lose steam, right? So it becomes next month, next month, next month, and then it, it peters out. I, well, I'm not going to take it too deep or too far, but how do you put the woods together like in this action pack source that you're putting here? That's where I'm missing the wall. What do you mean by that? The renewable woods. You know, how, how, do, you, how do you present that woods to, to, to the whole, your whole core? How much? Toby, how many different recordings and components do we have on the member site? Yes. That's, yeah, if you search for renewal blitz. Yeah. Um, the, how, how many do you have that, that aren't renewed, Joe? Okay. Wow. Yeah in, yeah, in simplest terms, I mean, in end, you know, let, 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 let me roll back to, to basic 101, which is, which is too simple for a lot of you, but let, 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 let's, let's do that. What, what he and Merrick and Dave and Bob to a lesser extent and me to a much lesser extent and how, how many others have you had on this project, Toby? Yeah, I mean, thousands of man hours. But this whole thing is now all done for you guys, right? Where, you know, the, if the student's trajectory is here, you have the lessons of the week, the kick in newsletter, uh, Black Belt Club support material, the National Black Belt Club material. Then you have the leadership program material, including, um, you've got a couple big posters now, right? There's two versions. One's kind of white, white, and the other one's more national. Okay. Do we have the like sketch out like this sort of yet, or is that still in progress? No, not yet. Okay, okay. So, but the, the 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 on the leadership stuff, there's an invitation, there's a certificate, there's a big color poster with like all of the content that that's available. Uh, there's um, uh, HTML emails, cut and paste that the leadership people will get and and pretty damn quickly there's going to be just enter their information and it'll all happen for you without you having to touch it right uh, and then there's the uh, uh, goal team which stands for guidance on leadership development uh, but in the past content it kind of skipped from here to here right because this was really more assistant instructor material and a lot of the guys used it for this, but it was really kind of a stretch above that, right? Uh, so, so now all this stuff is done for you. And you all should be using this because you don't have to put any brain damage in. It's automatically done as soon as all the technical gurus uh, with Toby, you're going to sleep again in, in, uh, in March, right, Toby? Yeah. Uh, but as soon as that other piece is done, you just put the gal at the front desk on and she enters their email and the stuff starts happening and then you print it out and you hand it to them in class and you have the poster, you talk about it. And, and the way it's set up now is when you send them an the email, they click the link and they go to a, a, a website uh, that is a little video of Tony Robbins or a little video of, of go through the, some, of the, some of the names, Toby.
Yeah, yeah. But there's little video clips and there's little handouts and there's homework assignments. It, 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 it's all damn done, right? And, 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 and some of it is very specific high profile people talking about martial arts like Brian Tracy, Tom Hopkins, uh, not Tom Hopkins, uh, um, Tony Robbins. And other is, is them talking about leadership but it's not specifically talking about martial arts. But that's all, all, all good, right? So all this stuff is completely done, right? And all of this stuff that's at the lower level this is stuff that should be going to every student, but it should also be going to every inactive student, and it should also be going to every prospect. And I've always said that like the, the, the student newsletter, the most valuable thing about like a four page newsletter, 11 by 17 folded into the mail, the most valuable thing about that is send it to every prospect and every dropout. Right? I mean, your current students are there. You know, it's, it, 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 it doesn't hurt anything. It's a nice it's a little additional touch. But everybody who's not coming in once or twice a week is, is there to stay, you know, in, in, their, you know, in their awareness, right? And again, this is all done for you. We may end up with, at some point, this is not a promise, but we may end up with a point that you just put the credit card in and it just automatically starts mailing it to them for however long it's predefined. So, so, um, have you had any luck with our printer suppliers on that yet, or? There are. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It may or may not. Well, what we, what we don't, yeah. Well, we can, I'm not sure we will, right? Here's, here, 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 here's, here's the business we don't want to be in. We don't want to be in on the business of like three people on the phones calling to follow up with people to get the list and to get the content and, and to because when you're actually in the done for you newsletter business, the biggest point of interface, you can't get the guy who already paid for it to give you the data to do it, right? And so if we can set it up where it's automatic and then you put it in and it happens for you and then we can facilitate behind the scenes, we'll do that. If we end up in that interface loop of chasing people down and nagging, we're not in the mood to do that. I'm, I'm not. Um, so, but see, all this stuff is done already, right? And so now from the standpoint of the leadership curriculum, the invitation is done. The cert certificate when they join, uh, the patches are, done, are set, right? The art, yeah, the, the art is set for that. Uh, the poster for your wall is set with that. And then it's a full 36 month curriculum that is de deliverable automatically to, to the students with homework assignments that you can hand out to the, to the, the students, right? Yeah. Yeah, so. At what age is the stuff more appropriate for? Are doing five year olds on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, here's here's the here's the irony of that question. When I'm talking to schools that are like MMA school, craft schools, one thing or another, they say, "Oh, that's all kids stuff." And when I'm talking to uninitiated people who run kids programs, they say, "Oh, that's all like to adult." And in, in the kids' side of it, see, truth be told among us, and this is not like you repeat it to your students, but truth be told among us, the leadership program material, the lessons of the week, are every bit as important for the parents to be getting subliminally um, and consciously as it is for their kid, right? Because... The biggest problem that any of us have with a seven-year-old is mom is completely giving them backward self-talk and is, you know, eradicating their enthusiasm for having high goals. And, and, and if, if mom's not doing it, the damned elementary school teacher is doing it, right? So it, it, to a great extent, what we're always trying to do is educate the parents to think about just like simple things positive self-talk versus negative self-talk, positive expectations versus negative expectations, 
positive associations with finances and so forth, not, not negative, and, and, and uh, uh, holding the kids' feet to the flames so that they don't drop out too easily of anything, including, of course, us. Um, but we're, we're really trying to, to do that, right? Then the second thing is, is that, you know, like over the years, one of our, uh, one of the refrains I heard a bunch of times is you just gave me this Tony Robbins, this Tony Robbins book or this book on West Point Way of Leadership and my eight-year-old is the one that's, you know, prepping for black belt. I'm not. Um, he can't read this. And I've always been immune to that, uh, although it's been a criticism. And what our logic was is this is a family project. The younger the child is, the more it's a family project, right? Now, we don't pitch them on that when they're renewing into it. We pitch them on, you know, we, we, we talk to them about that in year three and year four. Uh, but imagine the dynamic that happens by the time the child is black belt and the parent has gone with them through the books and through the, you know, through the written test and talked about the lessons and so forth, right? It, 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 it's, a, it, it's a really powerful thing that it's hard to get them to volunteer for, but it's fairly easy to coerce them into it uh, once they're far enough in the program that there's no turning back, right? Um, and on, on this material is ultimately what it becomes is there's a, a little student website where they're getting each of their leadership lessons. They're coming and, and watching the little videos every month. And what, what you should be doing here is if somebody's up here, let's say they're a brown belt SWAT team assistant instructor member. See, the deal is they should be getting this material plus this material plus this material plus this material, right? So they're getting the lessons of the week. They're getting the black belt club material. They're getting the leadership material, which is really robust. And they're getting the gold team material, which is really robust, right? And then by the time you layer it all over, it, 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 it's very robust and substantive. Right, and then leadership people should be getting this material and this material and this material, so that you know any one piece may not be a lot of stuff, but by the time you layer it over, it's it's you know may maybe even on the border of of a little bit overwhelming. Does that make sense? So, so that's the way the structure should be, and again, what. Um, what it dawned on me, frankly, as we were in the middle of this project, is so much of the stuff that's already been provided for everybody that's right there in the can, you know, isn't getting used, right? right? And for some of our lower level members is, like, they're not getting any of this. They're not getting any of the one-on-ones, any of that stuff. You know, they get to plug in on one of the calls of, of the three. Um, but so many times they go onto the website and they're just kind of randomly searching around and they're looking for whatever they think might be valuable. But what they tend to, what they tend to do left on their own is go look for and work on the stuff that they're already pretty good at. And they tend not to go look at the things that they're missing. Does that make sense? And when it, so when it comes to you guys is you really have to focus in and, and, and recognize there's all these resources available. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And, and, and now when we're talking about the Renewal Blitz, I mean, that's how I got started on that, right? So when we're talking about the Renewal Blitz, there's, there's a couple of points of leverage where it's easiest to make a huge, a huge blitz through everybody and have a deadline and have it be credible. One point of leverage is the price is going up. Another point of leverage is new, right? So right now with all this stuff, most of you should be using both, right? Is there's this new leadership program and go, you know, uh, uh, pull off the files and print them at Kinko's or one thing or another and have them foam core mounted and put all the stuff up and make a big, a, a big deal in the school about all this stuff. But have it be at that point. So if you're going to launch it now, the date we were just talking about, April 1st, let's say, right? So, or is it March 31st? So March 31st. So March 31st is the deadline. April 1st is the point at which the price is going up dramatically, right? So that's one point of leverage. 
And the other point of leverage is there's something new. It's easy to get people excited about new. That's why a grand opening is the best opportunity ever in the world to fill up a bunch of new people because there's pent up demand and it's something new and they all want to go check it out and try it out. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, but then having, having a point where the price was this, the price is going to be this, and when you're launching something new, the conversation is easy to be, uh, you know, since you've been a long time loyal student, we want to grandfather in uh, to the old price points. We're going to give you this discounted price until this date if you go ahead and move into it, right? So, you know, pick a number. It can be, you know, our leadership program is uh, the normal tuition is, is uh, $397 a month. Since you're a long time loyal student, uh, we'll uh, register you for $247 a month. Uh, that aggregate is uh, a, a $6,000 savings, right? So, and, 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 and you don't talk about it's a $100 a month savings, you talk about $6,000 savings, right? So, you know, the program is going to be um, uh, $1,500 down, $397 a month. Right now, you can do it for uh, uh, 750 down, uh, 247 a month, and yeah, I, I'm not sure that's the right number, but you know it's a six, seven, whatever the right number is, uh, seven thousand dollars savings. Right now, the savings is only a closing tool. Right, nobody ever does anything because it's cheap. Right, so. You know, if I want a Porsche 911 and you offer me the greatest deal ever on a, on a, uh, on a Chevette, if they still make them or whatever, uh, Ford Fiesta, I could give a shit, right? I'm just totally immune to, here's the greatest deal ever on a Ford Fiesta, right? Now, if you give me the greatest deal ever on a 911 Turbo, okay, I'm listening, right? Um, and so, don't mistake the discount as a, a, something that builds desire. All it does is it, is it pushes them over the hesitation to close now, over fear of loss. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, right? But in, in your case, if you've already been doing the leadership program, all this new stuff is the new thing, right? Is you now have all the posters and all the stuff and the little videos and, 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 and all that, so now you've got Here's the next level of the leadership program. And if you, yeah, yeah, there you go. Of course, of course. Uh, how it applies to what? No, it's really written for adults and then translated to kids, right? So. Well, I mean, like the Tony Robbins clips right now, the, orig the, the original source of that material was he was talking to convention of martial arts school owners as a black belt, recognizing June Rhee and talking about all the cool stuff that martial arts has done for him and giving adult martial arts school owners a checklist of things that they could think about to help them develop. Five, that, keys, to wealth, five keys to wealth and happiness. Yeah, it's really good, right? And, and so it is right on target, right on target for the average 32-year-old adult attorney who's coming in and, and, and training with you, right? Um, and, and then the question is, is, is my seven-year-old going to get it? Well, I mean, having had 30 or 40,000 of them over the years, my answer is always yes. Because as long as you have supportive parents and you have an instructor who in the classroom environment is translating, is I've always taught all of our instructors speak at an adult educated level, regardless of the age group and then translate, right? And 
part of how you move up the expectations in the school is you elevate the level of language. And some we didn't talk about staff training the other day, but you, you know, you've got to be constantly elevating their use of grammar, constantly elevating their their vocabulary. Is um, I've seen this happen a lot of times. You know, you hire, you hire, and, and nowadays, I mean, they can have two years of college and have horrible grammar, right? But you know, it used to be you've hired the instructor who's a high school dropout, and now you've got him teaching people with them, you know, with a median education of two or three years of college. And uh, 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 the example we were using of uh, Mark Lazier and Pramus, the instructor was exactly that way. I mean, he was, you know, he was he was talking worse than uh, uh, you know the counter person at McDonald's in the Bronx, right? So you've got to you've got to be aware of that. Um, but see. My argument is and has been is it's not only every bit as appropriate for the Krav guys as it is for, for the students at, at Carroll's other school there, but it's, it's, it's even more relevant, right? And the, again, and, 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 and take Nick's school or take uh, Eric and High or take your adult uh, group with the Joe Lewis uh, guys. What really is the difference between Joe Lewis, Bill Wallace, Jeff Smith, and all the guys who are second here? How much absolute physical capability difference was it versus how much of it was mental fortitude, focus, desire, competitiveness, and, and, and emotional control, right? And I've got to tell you, like even in our own case, you know, we had a stable of fighters. All of them were fabulous. But the guy who, when he got hit, didn't have the emotional control to stay in the game would be the one that had every bit as much physical talent but never got anywhere, right? Or he became number five in the world, but he didn't ever become, you know, the undefeated champion. And when you're talking to to adults in a martial art context, that mental determination, that ability to focus. I mean, one of the best articles I ever saw was Joe Lewis in 1975 or something like that in Professional Karate Magazine. Did you ever see that one? Um, um, there, he's, he's talking about um, angular attack in part, but he is also talking about mental focus and fighting. And he was talking about internal focus, external focus, emotional content of, of, of fighting. And that's why also I like that Peyton Quinn stuff, you know. I, now, I'm never going to do it with a kid's school, right? But what they're talking about is they're talking about adrenal stress and how to react to uh, adrenal stress and the fact that, you know, most black belts, all of a sudden they're in a real situation and they've never been taught how to, like, just, you know, maintain their composure, right? And so they have all this physical skill set, but mentally they, they, you know, they turn to jello. So... You know, my, my argument always has been, and, and, and frankly, all this stuff really, you know, my first, other than like Joe Lewis's article and so forth, my first sense of it actually being in a martial arts program was June Ree, but we had 80, 85% adults then. It wasn't a kid's school then, right? I mean, in the 70s, I mean, you know, we used to get mad at June Ree because he'd talk, come in and talk about getting better grades. And we say, Master Ree, we had a test of 60 people. There were six kids, 54 adults, and you're talking about you got to be an A student. Do you know? I mean, maybe we could make it a, like a kid's test, an adult test, and stop talking about this damn, you know, right? I mean, that was what the, the environment was back there, right? I mean, remember all the, you know, all the staff were professional kickboxers. I used to joke that I was the best non-professional fighter on staff, right? Um, but... Um, all of it is completely appropriate in that context, right? And, and again, I mean, think in terms of, of teaching Krav. If they're there for real hardcore self-defense, the first problem you have, no matter how technically proficient, how athletic anybody is, is as soon as it's unexpected, they're mentally out of the game, right? I mean, let's talk as martial artists. I'm walking down, walking down the street and something happens I don't expect, they don't have their head in the game, right? How long can they have their head in the, out of the game and, and survive? Not long, 
right? Because most confrontations last. Toby, you had the FBI stat, I thought. Uh, what, what, most conf real confrontations last, what? What is it? Yeah, I think it was 12 or 17 or something like that. 